Welcome back, everyone. I'm Roommate, and let me introduce you to the second in our Fifty Shades of Horror series, another 1993 Disney film, The Nightmare Before Christmas. This musical masterpiece is a wonder to behold, and if you want to behold it yourself, just like Hocus Pocus, you can see The Nightmare Before Christmas on Disney Plus in HD. The music is so stirring that I get chills when I'm not sporting a huge dumb grin, or tearing up. So much emotion is packed into this rather short movie, which not counting credits or title cards, comes in at exactly 73 minutes. If you ever need an example of a movie that can give a satisfying three-act plot structure quickly without feeling incoherent, point to The Nightmare Before Christmas. I put the end of Act 1 when Jack returns from Christmas Town at 20 minutes in, and the end of Act 2 when Jack rides off in his sleigh at 53 minutes in. So while Hocus Pocus occurred on Halloween, this movie is all about Halloween. You see, in this movie the different holidays are... huh. What's the word that's like personified, but you mean a whole community instead of just one individual? Communified? Yeah. The various holidays are communified. We start in Halloween Town, where all the denizens eagerly await Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King. And look at that introduction. This movie is gorgeous. There's so much effort put into the presentation. Like, I think they create the fire with a mix of actual recordings for the torches, and then 2D animations overlaid on Jack's real-world puppet. It looks amazingly convincing. And each individual Halloween Town citizen is so unique. I'll never get through this review if I keep gushing over every detail. My fanboying over this place is just like what Jack has to deal with from all the monsters of the village. They just want to heap praise on him, and he is more than a little sick of it. So he sneaks off to be alone. Ironically, his greatest admirer, Sally keeps a respectful distance from him, though she does stalk him as he goes into the cemetery. In the cemetery, Jack wakes up his ghost dog Zero, then he soliloquizes over how he lost his passion. It's so easy for him now. When it comes to surprises in the moonlit night, I excel without ever even trying. It's become routine. He doesn't look forward to Halloween because there's nowhere further to go with it. He's already done everything he can think of to the best of his abilities countless times without struggle, so he yearns for something more. But he doesn't know what, so he wanders off. Sally hears his lamentations and parts ways after picking up some poisonous herbs from the cemetery. You see, Sally is a creation of the mad scientist Dr. Finkelstein, and he's a rather possessive creator. She's sick of him and uses the poisonous herbs to escape on a regular basis. She's rather crafty. Until you taste it, I won't swallow a spoonful. I'm not hungry. Oops. You want me to stop? Me, to whom you owe your very life. Oh, don't be silly. Mmm, sweet, scrumptious. And the doctor isn't as smart as he thinks he is, so she's successful. But since she has... No way to go! She keeps coming back. Jack's wandering takes him to a place where portals to all the different holiday towns are arranged in a circle. He marvels at all of them, but perhaps the most different one of all calls out to him, Christmas Town. Once he gets sucked in, he's awestruck. He can't understand the world he's in. The joyous warmth, the merriment, the coziness, the cheerful spectacle. It's also exotic, intriguing, and mystifying to him. He realizes that the doldrums of his familiarity have been left behind. He has a new purpose, to understand and take part of this new holiday spirit. Jack returns to Halloween Town, which relieves the townsfolk who were pretty worried about his disappearance, and calls him to discuss what he has seen. While the grotesque assembly respects Jack, and they're eager to mirror his enthusiasm, they have an even harder time understanding Christmas than Jack does. At least Jack knows there's something about it he can't wrap his head around. They all think that they've got it. Stockings are supposed to have rotten, severed feet, right? Presents are supposed to have shrunken heads, right? And while I did see Hocus Pocus when I was really young, seeing this image in the trailer for the movie scared me so much that I don't think I watched this one until high school. Yeah, I was a pretty delicate eight-year-old. Don't worry. I'm a big kid now. But back to the movie. So Jack gives them what they want, describing the leader of Christmas Town as a fierce warrior dressed all in crimson with huge pincers. Sandy Claw. 
While Jack satisfied the crowd, he's even more frustrated by his inability to comprehend and convey the wonder of Christmas, so he sets off to discover the truth. After borrowing some equipment from Finkelstein, he conducts a variety of experiments to make sense of the magic at work here. Sally seems to get the spirit of Christmas without even trying, because she gives gifts to Jack just to make him happy without even asking for anything in return. She gets a vision of the strife up ahead, while Jack finally makes a breakthrough. To understand Christmas, he must become Christmas. Eureka! So he gathers up everyone again, saying that they need to take care of Christmas this year. Everyone gets a project, perhaps the most important being the three trick-or-treaters are to bring Sandy Claus to Halloween Town. But it turns out that Jack shouldn't trust Lock, Shock, and Barrel, who plan on doing something wicked to him, ultimately settling on handing him over to the most sinister citizen of Halloween Town, the Oogie Boogie. While the little miscreants mistakenly grab the Easter, <laughs> Finkelstein animates some skeletal reindeer, the band practices some haunting renditions of Christmas songs, and everyone else makes some… interesting toys. My favorite's this Matryoshka doll with a dead scorpion in the middle. Classic. In Christmas Town, the elves continue to make heartwarming gifts, which is awesomely juxtaposed with the bone chilling counterparts being forged in Halloween Town. While Santa is checking his list twice to see who's naughty and nice, the three little brats finally nab him. Sally tries to warn Jack of her bad omen, but he's so preoccupied with his quest for grandeur that he can't even tell that she's warning him. Santa arrives in Halloween Town, and he's not quite as excited as Jack was to see this alien place he doesn't understand. After Jack borrows his hat, the twerps ferry him off to the Oogie Boogie. Here we see what an evil sack of bugs the Oogie Boogie really is. His place looks like a blacklight nightmare casino. He has dice, roulette, slots, billiards, cards. He's a gambling man, but he always rigs the game in his favor. Santa is at his mercy. After Jack Nosferatu's his way out of the coffin, which is his sleigh by the way, Sally attempts to sabotage Jack's sleigh ride by creating a fog as a last ditch effort to prevent the terrible prophecy she witnessed from happening. I think this shot is real. Real fog. Awesome. But it turns out that Zero can do an excellent Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer impression, so Jack heads off all the same. Sally, defeated by her inability to save Jack, sings the saddest song in the movie. Like this video if you cry every time. So Jack's foray into gift giving is off to a great start as he hangs a decorative angel with Christmas lights. While he genuinely tries to make this kid happy, he ends up just creeping him out. Jack! I know that your spindly physique makes you look badass like Billy Bob Thornton and Bad Santa, but there's something comforting about that belly like a bowl full of jelly look. And that whole fleshless skull thing isn't too reassuring either. After a string of other misguided and horribly received outings, the parents wise up and start protecting themselves. These people must take Christmas pretty seriously because they end up shooting Jack out of the sky. While she is despondent, Sally powers through it and heads off to save Santa. She uses her detaching abilities to distract the Oogie Boogie and free Santa simultaneously, but then the ruse falters and she winds up in just as deep of trouble as Santa is in. Jack is saddened by his failure to bring them something great, but he realizes that through the struggling he felt the passion that he was afraid he had lost. He's excited about the next Halloween, which he now has new ideas for. He embraces his true nature as the Pumpkin King, and heads back to return Santa to his proper place as well. As the Oogie Boogie is toying with Santa and Sally, Jack saves them and takes their place in the hot seat. I love this shot when he goes low and looks like a spider. After avoiding all the Boogie's traps, Jack ties a loose thread of his sack to the traps, causing the Oogie Boogie to be revealed as just a bunch of creepy crawlies. Jack apologizes to the now freed Santa, who hastily grabs his hat back. Santa tells Jack to listen to Sally who he says, She's the only one who makes any sense around this insane asylum. Then he whisked away up the chimney with a thumb of his nose. Jack and Sally return to the town square, which is the first time that the rest of Halloween Town learns that Jack survived being shot down. Santa leaves to deliver the proper gifts to the children of the world, leaving the wondrous snow all over Halloween Town, which causes the ghoulish menagerie to finally comprehend a bit of the playful good nature of Christmas. Sally heads off to the hill that she saw Jack on earlier, and this time he follows her. They realize they are meant for each other, and they embrace and kiss as the movie ends. Alright, now I'm crying again. All this beautiful singing, I can't take it.
Wow, this movie, it's so good. I can't tell you how many details just delight me. Well, maybe I can in another video. How about 256,422 things I love about The Nightmare Before Christmas? But let's wrap up this video first. Now, not every movie needs to have a message to be good. I don't think that Hocus Pocus has one. What would it be? Virgin shouldn't like candles? But I think The Nightmare Before Christmas does. Jack's struggles make it pretty clear that being stuck in one place, one mindset, one emotional landscape can make life lose its luster. As an extension of this idea, being the best at something can be unrewarding. It's the struggle to be the best that fulfills us, not the position of being the best. So when Jack is frustrated by the elusive Christmas spirit, he is driven and filled with purpose. Not in spite of his failures, but because of them, he feels excited about each passing day. And by moving out of his comfort zone, Jack actually understands himself better. He values who he is more highly. He doesn't lose his identity by participating in another way of life on its own terms. His Halloween nature isn't replaced but rather reinforced by the Christmas spirit, which he continues to respect even if he doesn't embody it. If only more people could learn how to do what Jack did, maybe we wouldn't live in such a divided and judgmental society. Another related concept the movie toys with is contrast. Halloween Town is a place for dread, shock, and revulsion that makes you want to run away screaming. Christmas Town is a cozy place for play, sharing, and love that makes you want to congregate with those you care about. So putting these polar opposites next to each other let us cherish each of them for their own strengths. After their ordeals with the frightful gifts from Jack, the nice children have never wanted Santa more. And so by morning, this could be their best Christmas Christmas ever due to its flirtation with being the worst. And the comparison makes us see some interesting similarities. The irregular shape of the architecture looks unnerving in Halloween Town, but the same asymmetrical and unique stylings give Christmas Town a sense of quaint, artisanal craftsmanship that illustrates the specific care put into each creation. And both towns put an emphasis on surprise, with Halloween focusing on threats lurking in the dark corners and Christmas focusing on delightful gifts hidden in presents and stockings. While they are opposite sides, they are still part of the same coin. One that emphasizes the importance of personal experience and curiosity for the particular elements that life has in store for us, for better or worse. This is why I think that Sally is so important to the story, because much like how her clothes and her actual form are stitched together, she represents the need to synthesize what might seem like contradictory aspects of life. She is the most caring, nurturing, and sensitive person in Halloween Town, and gets her recognition from Santa for that. But she's capable of deceit, and can be dangerous, which she is proud of. That's twice this month you slip deadly nightshade into my tea and run off. Three times. So by symbolizing the synthesis of Naughty and Nice, Sally being embraced by Jack means that he has realized that he can be an even better version of himself. She can show him how to be both scary and merry. This week's recommendation for another Nightmare Before Christmas review is for Movie Bitches. Their channel is about reviewing movies and TV shows, and they're particularly fond of RuPaul's Drag Race. They sip wine while they let their conversations wander all over the place. For instance... The science montage. It's great. When he opens his Mary Poppins bag and it's just beakers <laughs> and microscopes. But the square root of Christmas equals chestnuts over an open fire divided by... But then it's, all, it's a sandy, and then it's yeah. just like a lobster claw. <laughs> Love it. Sandy claws. I'm not mad at a Halloween costume where you are Sandra D with lobster claws and you are Sandy claws. Not mad. Look at me. I'm, I'm Sandy claws. <laughs> It's the stupidest thing ever, and no one would get it, and I would love or it. Or would they? What if or it did? <gasps> and while they do have a lot of fun, they still analyze the movies as well. Because stop motion is such a pain in the ass to make, like, right. it becomes difficult to have it be this really elaborate set mm -hmm. or background or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the way they worked around it was really great of using negative space and, like, black or whatever, uh -huh. but artistically. It's like, yeah. this fits and this sets a mood, even though it's just empty space. They're very charming and thought-provoking. Check them out. The link is in the description. So far, not too scary, right? I'd say that this movie is scarier than Hocus Pocus, since the atmosphere is universally so macabre. We have guillotines and electric chairs, all kinds of ghosts and ghouls. There's certainly more gross elements than Hocus Pocus, but we're still pretty light on danger and tension, so I would be shocked if any would find this too much. The third movie isn't going to be a Disney family flick, I swear. I can think of two big reasons the next movie would make Mickey blush. Remember to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next one drops. Share this video so you can see how far your friends and family can make it. Let me know in the comments if you agree that The Nightmare Before Christmas is indeed scarier than Hocus Pocus. I hope you enjoyed this video. I believe it was our most horrible yet. Thank you everyone. 
and I just can't wait until next Saturday because I've got a new movie that'll really make y'all scream. Until then, here's a scary grimace to all and to all a good fright.